It was a rainy day in Minneapolis. A good day to go thrifting. And this is what I found that day. It's a mid-century cocktail table by Drexel. And you may be wondering what's the difference between a cocktail table and a coffee table. And I don't know, but it says cocktail table on the bottom, so I'm going to call it that. It was in pretty rough shape and needed a complete refinish, and the legs needed to be reglued. And that black mark there is a burn, and I was afraid I was going to have to do a veneer patch to fix that, but it ended up not being much of a problem, which you'll see later. So let's get started. First thing to do was to re-glue the legs. And as you can see here, they were pretty loose. Actually, really the only thing keeping them in were the screws. So first thing to do was to take the screw out. And then I got the rubber mallet out, just gave it a few taps and it came right off. And then I noticed that this piece was cracked, so that also needed some glue. And this was a good job for the glue syringe. I just forced it open a little bit with a screwdriver and shot some glue in there and then clamped it up. Then I just scraped all of the surfaces with a razor blade just to get the old glue off and get ready for the new glue. Then it's time to put on some new glue. At this point, I ran into a little snag. I had done a dry run and assembled the leg without any glue just to make sure it was going to go on okay and went on fine and it looked like it wasn't even going to need any clamps and the screw would be enough to hold it in place. But once I got the glue on the dowels and in the holes, then it didn't want to go on all the way. And I had to really uh, give it some taps with the hammer and it was obvious it was going to need to be clamped. So I needed to figure out how to clamp it, which was an awkward situation because there were really no straight surfaces to get the clamp on so um, I just did my best I put one clamp going across and then I put one clamp um, going vertically to pull the leg back down onto the table surface and then I put the screw in and that ended up working but for the rest of the legs I figured out a better way to do it I think the problem with the first leg was that that tight bond glue was just too thick to allow the leg to go in without any clamp pressure. So for the rest of the legs, I used this glue from uh, Brie Wax and I got it at Rockler and it's really thin, almost water thin. So I just used this glue on the dowels and inside the dowel holes. And then for every other surface, I used the tight bond and this worked out great. The legs went in with barely any pressure needed and the screws were enough to hold them in place and I didn't have to do the crazy clamp job again. And here you can see as the screw goes in, um, you can see the glue squeeze out in the joint. So it was a nice tight joint with just the screw. Next thing was stripping. And I started with the legs, and uh, it looked like they had actually been refinished badly already. And you, I could see drips and just uh, some weird looking, I don't know, stain or something on there that just uh, was evidence of a previous refinish. There you can see drips there. I just used citrus strip like I usually do, and it all came right off. Then I did the same thing for the top. Citrus strip followed by mineral spirits and 4 aught steel wool to clean off any residue. And here's the table after stripping and it's had time to dry. 
and it looks pretty awful. But uh, it always looks awful at this point. It'll get better. And you can see that burn mark is still there. And really the only way to get that out would have been to cut out that piece of veneer and put a new piece in. Um, but I decided not to do that on this one. And you'll see after I got the stain on and the top coat on, it really wasn't that visible. And it almost looks like a faint knot in the wood because it's sort of, the shape of it is sort of going with the grain. But if you'd like to see another video I did where I repaired a burn mark in veneer, check the link uh, on the screen. And here I'm just wiping it down with some naphtha. This just gives me an idea of what the grain's gonna look like once I get finish on. And if there's any issues, they'll pop out at this point. Next up is the stain, and this is Varathane American Walnut Oil Stain. And the first thing I applied it to was the legs, and in this shot, I've already applied the stain and wiped it off. And then I'm gonna come back later and spray it with some brown toner lacquer to darken it up a bit so it matches the top better. Because on this table, like with a lot of furniture, all the solid wood parts are uh, cheaper wood, something other than walnut. And then the top center portion is a walnut veneer. So the cheaper wood is a lot lighter than the walnut veneer. So in order to get it darker, so it matches a little better, um, spraying it with this brown lacquer. And I'll do this also with that ring of wood that goes around the top which is also is probably the same wood that the legs are made out of. And it's quite a bit lighter in color than that walnut veneer. Next up, it was time to stain the top. And first I applied this pre-stained conditioner. And this probably isn't uh, entirely necessary on walnut, but I like to use it anyway. I just feel like it gives me more control over how quickly the stain is absorbed. And then I just applied the same varathane American Walnut stain that I used on the legs. And then I sprayed that ring that goes around the top with the same brown uh, toner lacquer that I used on the legs. And I just cut out that piece of paper to mask off the walnut a little bit because that didn't really need any toner. So that just kept most of it off the top. So it just went on that ring and just got a little darker. So it was a little closer to the center walnut piece. And I apply this toner lacquer in light coats and just work up slowly to the color you're going for. It's not paint, so you don't wanna just slosh it on all at once. Just kinda of work your way up slowly. And here it is, all ready for the top coat. For the top coat, I'm using Minwax Satin Wipe-On Polyurethane. These are the little buttons that go in the screw holes on the legs. And I had to use new ones because the old ones got all mangled when I was getting them out. So I sprayed these with some that same brown toner lacquer that I used on the legs. And then they go back in the holes. And I just used a little bit of glue. You don't need a lot. Um, it was a pretty tight fit to begin with. finishing touch after the polyurethane was dry was to wax the top with this brown wax and some 4 aught steel wool. This is optional. You don't have to do this. I like doing it sometimes. And this also gets out those little dust nibs and things that can get into the polyurethane as it dries. This will smooth those out. And it gives you a nice wax finish, which will provide some protection against liquids. And I don't press hard, just real light touch and 
I don't apply a lot of wax because if you apply too much, it's hard to get off. So just a little bit and I put it on and then I take it right off. And I like to use this brown wax on darker woods like this uh, because if you use the lighter wax and if you apply a little too much and it gets stuck in the pores of the wood, when it dries, it turns white. And then you have like these little white spots, little specks uh, on your dark wood. And that's annoying. So that's why I use the dark wax. Here's the finished product. Thanks for watching.